So YouTube is preparing <clears throat> it now. It says we are live, so I will go ahead and get it started. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us live here on Facebook through YouTube. Uh, we were having some issues connecting directly to Facebook, so we're going to just go ahead and give me just a second here to copy and paste this link. So we're actually live on YouTube and monitoring, monitoring the live video on Facebook. So as you're watching, if you have any questions for Sergeant Shrub um, about anything that we're talking about here, go ahead and put it in the uh, chat thread or the comment thread on the YouTube link on Facebook and we will get to those questions. Or if you are internet savvy and you can watch it live on YouTube, uh, I will monitor the live chat on this video as well. So there's two different ways you can submit any questions that you have uh, for Sergeant Shrub or myself. Um, welcome. Thank you again for joining us. It's been uh, a minute since we did one of these live Q&As, but we are joining you live from the Oxnard Police Department here in beautiful downtown Oxnard. And my name is Paul Carganilla. I'm the Community Affairs Manager for the department. And uh, we started these conversations a few months back just to kind of get to know our officers a little bit better and to, during these crazy COVID times, to open uh, um, just any line of communication, any way that we could connect with you guys and answer any questions that you might have about things that are going on or what what um, it's like being an officer in these crazy times. And uh, it's just been an absolute pleasure to introduce you, the community, to our various officers. We've only scratched the surface here. But it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you our guest for this evening, Sergeant Daniel Shrub. Sergeant Shrub, welcome. Hey, Paul. How you doing? Thanks for having me, as always. It is a thrill to have you on. Uh, we're going to talk about really um, the big event that you have this weekend and uh, uh, the biggest reason we wanted to have you on. But as we do on each one of these Q&As, I kind of just wanted to get to know you a little bit first and, and offer anybody who's watching out there an opportunity to get to know you um, and find out, like, what made you want to be a police officer? What your career has been like so far? So I always rewind all the way back to the very beginning. Sergeant Daniel Shrub, born and raised. Right. So, yes, Daniel Shrub, Sergeant, here with the Oxnard Police Department. Hello, everybody out there. Um, again, thanks, Paul, for having me here and representing the drag program, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, but born and raised here in our beautiful city of Oxnard. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, south, south, uh, south part of town. Went to the area schools down in the south end of uh, Oxnard. Which school specifically? Oh, uh, Blackstock Junior High, Panther, and also Channel Islands High School, which is right there on Rose Avenue. Um, a Raider. Um, plenty of Raiders that actually work here at the department. So uh, give a quick shout out to those folks. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So... Uh, you grew up born, born and raised here in town. Very cool. What was it? What happened in your life or at what point in your life did you decide, hey, being a police officer, that's what I want to do? Well, you know, I tell you, it was in the 90s, which, um, you know, wasn't so long ago, right? Um, right. Definitely. Um, but yeah, early 90s, uh, you know, in the early 20s uh, of my, my life, it was it was more of a you know, working hard, you know, trying to be responsible on your own, trying to figure things out at that age. But uh, the light switch does come on at some point and says, hey, you got to get serious about what you want to do in life. Um, I always thought I was going to, uh, this might be news to some of you folks that know me, but uh, I was planning to be an architect. You know, I'll put that out there. Wow. Um, I had a, a little knack for uh, a, a niche for uh, drawing plans and doing things like that. But um now were you uh, into art were you into like sketching just in general did you love oh, yeah okay yeah. definitely uh in high school and outside of high school but then i, I did i did take a liking to the architectural uh uh profession in that that, that line of work uh in, late in high school and thought i would pursue that definitely right after high school and and there were some challenges that that were there um at the moment. So again, right. back to just trying to figure things out as a young person. And I'll say that to anybody out there who's watching, you know, if you don't know what you want to do right out of high school, it's okay. 
um, but take that time to research and see what what's the best fit for you. Um, and that's what I had to do. And you know, meeting some some folks that I'm still friends with today in law enforcement are the ones that got me interested in it. Um, and I, I I just pursued it and and went after it and by the early 90s 92 93 I was I was vested in it so yeah very cool so um when did you hit the academy here or when did you apply was it 90? oh I've been here with the Oxnard Police Department I'm going on my 24th year wow. um so it, it's been a um just a, an extraordinary career um I I did interviews earlier today with some candidates um and if they're watching out there, thank you very much. You know, you guys all did a great job. And, you know, you don't know what you want to do in this career early on. You just want to be a police officer and, and be out on the streets and, and helping your community and the members of the community. And, and you know, th those things will come when you become a police officer. But it's, it's not just that. It's the family that's uh, created here at the Oxnard Police Department. And, fellow, and other neighboring agencies for that matter. Um, but when that's created and, and it's a sense of family and, and you're in this career for 20 plus years, um, you know, it, it certainly is impactful to, to your life. And I think for anyone that's got 20 plus years on can attest to that. And I, I, I wouldn't script it any, any better than that, uh, being here at, at a, in an agency that I grew up uh, locally here and, and admiring those officers that came before me. So in your 24 years, I'm sure you've had a, a various, uh, a wide array of assignments. Can you name some of those? Um, yeah, yeah, I've had a few. It's, it's not a huge list, but um, I was a field training officer at one point. Um, I think a lot of folks uh, that work here aspire to be a field, field training officer to try and teach those that come after you, um, you know, what you've learned and, and spread the knowledge. Uh, you know, I've, I've been a part of our special uh, enforcement unit, with, which is our SWAT team. Uh, I was there for about six years in my career. Um, did the neighborhood policing team, which I'm, I'm sure you've had folks from that unit here on the show. Um, and from there, uh, promoted into field supervisor, which is a sergeant um, here now. And been, been in the field uh, managing uh, our SROs for the high schools and our patrol officers for the past seven years. What are your highlights? What are, what, what are, were the fav, well, I mean, I know you can't pick, it's like picking a favorite kid, right? A favorite assignment, but like which, which assignments have you really enjoyed the most throughout the years? You know, I mean, for the action part of it, Paul, which I know you're, you, you like, um, cause you're out on location, you know, taking all those shots of our officers and we appreciate that. Um, you know, SWAT, um, the special enforcement unit that, that, really gave a wide spectrum of, of, of that. And I'll always appreciate that assignment. Um, but the neighborhood policing team, getting to know our community members and really delving into, you know, what matters, that problem solving aspect, quality of life issues that people really uh, want our police officers to tend to is, is huge. And I, I was really vested in that for that period of time I was uh, in that position. And, you know, um, meeting a lot of community members and friends that are still, I mean, we still connected today. Um, that says a lot. This is a lot about our city too, that, you know, we're, we're, we're very uh, engaged and, and that's important uh, in any, any police career is that the community member supports you. Yeah. Um, so the reason we're here tonight really is to talk about a super cool thing that's happening this weekend, but uh, in order to talk about that, I want to talk about how that all began. Um, tell us about the drag program, what it is, how it started. Like, wh where did this crazy thing come from? Yeah, it, it is crazy. Um, you know, I'm sure everybody out there that's watching has heard of the, the Police Activities League, which has been around forever. That's just a great organization that tends to our youth um, in, in town. Uh, giving them opportunities and, and outlets. Um, so, you know, back in 2009, 2010, around in that area, um, Sergeant Charles Woodruff, who's also a, a works here at the Oxnard Police Department, he and I got together and we came up with the drag program, um, which is an after school automotive program. Uh, and if many of you have seen some of our, our cool, you know, fancy 
decked out police Mustang vehicles uh, at, at some community events or perhaps driving from one point to the other. Um, that's our kind of our mascot, our, our symbol of the program that uh, we offer to our youth. Uh, and it's usually ages 14 to about 18, that high school range. Um, and what we offer them is an incentive uh, to the automotive industry. And um, we were there as mentors, you know, the police mentorship. Um, we have, have community members that come in and speak uh, that, that, that give them opportunities in terms of internships, jobs, uh, uh, continuing education, if that's what they're after. Um, so it's just a wide variety of, of things that we offer these high school kids that need direction, really. And that's how it all kind of came about. Uh, early 2011, kind of our first class started uh, in the springtime, and it just took off from there. The, the, the kids just are so attracted to um, this career exploration that we're offering to them. Um, and it's worked. We've got so many kids that are in, in great places right now. That is so cool. And I know like you've developed like scholarships. And so it's not right. only to, you know, give them something while they're in high school, but it's building towards so much more. And what, and you know, once a year, Paul, um, uh, we're on our fourth, we've done four vehicles, but we'll do our fifth one this year. Um, every year our students acquire a used vehicle, a pre-owned car, you know, that might need some minor repairs, paint, brakes, you know, something simple. But our kids get an opportunity to work on that, learn the skill set, learn how to do those things. And towards Christmas time, um, where we kind of put it out to the community, our Oxnard community here, um, a family that's in need of a vehicle and our, our students actually select those families. Um, and then we give it away around just a couple of, couple of weeks before Christmas. It's, it's such a, a great event. It's such a huge rewarding system for our kids to see that. Uh, it kind of brings it around full circle. You know, that's, that's exciting for us. Yeah, that is a super cool thing that you guys do. Um, and there's another super cool thing that you do every yeah. year. Well, every year until this year. Well, how many, oh. how many years in a row have we done the car show? Well, I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> every year every yes every yeah, year except right. for this year right right um yeah. but car we've show. we've been doing the car show here at the station what three or four years running? yeah we uh completed our third one last year and we were looking at our fourth one this year and unfortunately we weren't able to do that and usually it's the end of august um but um we have a replacement um for the car show and uh came up kind of a cool idea and uh, our program director, uh, who is Daniel Escobar, will go over the details here in just a second, but um, it's a drag car show cruise, um, what we're calling it, it's presented by drag, it's for our kids. A little fundraiser that we put together, it's this Sunday, October 25th. And the idea behind it, or the premise behind it, is we're on the road um, in different groups. There'll be four different groups, so we're not, there's no traffic condition. We don't want any of that, but maybe 10 cars at the most. And we'll show it on a split screen here in a minute, but we're gonna uh, cruise through some of the neighborhoods uh, where a lot of our residents of, residents that live in those neighborhoods can actually vote for their favorite car. Um, just like they would if we were doing a static car show right out in front of our police station, right, Paul? Yeah. Our cars will have numbers on them in the right passenger front window and folks will be able to vote online at info at dragteam.org. And we'll put that on the screen for you folks too, but. It's really cool where you can just vote, you know, car 33, car 45, whatever that is. And then those cars will be awarded with um, a trophy uh, of sort uh, at the end of the cruise. Um, so really good fundraiser. We've got, we've got 50 plus cars that are already signed up, which is very cool. Um, and our drag vehicles are, are, are that I mentioned earlier, the Mustangs will be out there kind of leading the pack, uh, leading those groups. Um, so it's safe and monitored and just adhering to those restrictions that we're all under today. Wow, that, that's something I'm super excited to see how this goes. Uh, but I just wanna remind everybody who's watching real quick, um, we are live at this moment on YouTube. It, at this moment, I say, if, if you're watching it now at 5.47 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time on Thursday, the 22nd. Um, if you have any questions about the program, or the uh, upcoming car show, uh, go ahead and enter it in the YouTube chat or on Facebook as a comment in the thread here, and we'll try to uh, 
get, address it before the end of the, this uh, show here tonight. But um, you mentioned Dan- the other Daniel. Yeah, there's two. <laughs> Did you want to introduce him? Yeah, he's our program uh, director. Uh, and he's been with us uh, for a little over a year now. And he's amazing. Uh, and I want him to go ahead and explain. There he is. How you doing, Daniel? Good go afternoon, ahead. everyone. Good yeah. afternoon. Welcome Good. to the live Q&A here. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I didn't, I didn't mean to step on your uh, wonderful introduction there, Sergeant. No, that, that's okay. It's all over now. They're, they're here. <laughs> yeah. Right. So no, no, welcome. And, you know, the, the car show cruise is, is a kind of a substitute for our car show, that, again, that static car show, but we're really looking forward to uh, the neighbors that are going to be in this. And we'll show the screen here in just a second. It, the residents that are in those particular neighborhoods that we're going to visit, that you just step outside of your house and watch the crews go by. Um, we're going to be running through your neighborhoods between 10 a.m. and 12 p.m. So it's not a large window of time. You know, it's kind of late breakfast maybe-ish and then early lunch time. So hopefully everyone's home and they can kind of tune in and watch it go by your house. And like I said, take a cell phone and Go to our web or go to our website or just our info at dragteam.org and just vote on a car and our entries or our participants will really appreciate that. Go for now, it. is that all of the information you just brought him on to say? <laughs> that, that's a lot of it, but um, I don't. One thing that we want to make sure that is communicated is that it, it is a car show portion in the morning. However, we can't have everyone like we would in a, any other year. For, we would welcome everyone in the city, around the county to come by, have a great time, check out the cars. Unfortunately, with everything going on this year, we can't do that. So we came up with the idea to live stream this very much like what you're doing right now. So we're going to do our first for- foray into live streaming. Um, we're going to do this on Instagram Live, and we're playing around with trying to integrate Twitch as well. So people can tune in and see all the vehicles from 8.30 a.m. to 10 and while you're watching those vehicles, you can go ahead and, as Sergeant Shrub mentioned, you can vote um, by emailing info at dragteam.org for, you know, the different categories we have, whichever one you like the best, best paint job, um, coolest ride, all those categories. Um, and then afterward, everyone will be going off on their route for the neighborhood. We're doing the same route um, for the four groups, but it's just going to be staggered just to make sure that we're all safe and sound. Now, do you mind if I share that neighborhood map with everyone now? Yep. Let's do mm-hmm. that. So here's the neighborhoods that they'll be hitting Sunday morning. And in, in that order, right? That's the number is the order. Mm-hmm. We don't want to confuse, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, our first stop there through the Murphy Auto Museum, been a big supporter uh, throughout the years. Uh, they're re- kind of a, a grand reopening uh, location there. So we'll cruise through there. Uh, the Colonia neighborhood uh, will be second. So just a couple of streets. I'll just put it out there right now that we'll be hitting uh, uh, or driving through, I should say, uh, is through Marquita and the Cooper Road area, as long as uh, along with Garfield uh, Avenue, moving our way up to the West Village neighborhood, which is just north there. And, uh, you know, areas of Cesar Chavez, Martin Luther King, kind of right there behind Pacifica High School, some of those other side streets like Indio and um, Pedra and those those streets, and then move our way up to Rio Lindo. Um, the collection, real briefly through there, uh, and then River Park. If everyone's familiar, you know, we got Central Park. We're just going to kind of cruise around where the fountain is. There, there's plenty of homes there, plenty of people that can come out and see us, uh, and then work our way down Ventura Road through River Ridge, uh, Victoria States, Cabrillo neighborhood, uh, and then Sea Air. Um, so what, what I do want to preface here, and everyone can kind of figure out the, the route there, and we're going to end up somewhere around there, around the Oxnard State Beach uh, area, um, where we'll end up, uh, where we'll hand out trophies and do all of that good stuff. Um, acknowledge some, some supporters and keep it real brief. Um, we're not going to be there for more than probably an hour, um, just to do the restrictions, just to do the trophy presentation real quick, and then everybody will be on their way. Um, this is kind of part one, you know, Daniel, right? We were talking about this kind of part one of, of many other cruises. Uh, I mean, looking at that map kind of looks like we're kind of, you know, in a northern kind of area of the city. Um, but we do plan on um, uh, going, 
going further south and, and doing something similar to this, maybe around the holidays. It just depends on, on how much time everybody has. And the cruisers, you know, they're a big part of this, all the cruisers that are coming out to participate. Um, you know, we want to we wanna make sure we get, you know, everybody involved. Um, but this, this is a pretty good run for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I, I'm sorry there. Um, we, we A lot of our students come from the south side of Oxnard, so we want to make sure that we visit their uh, neighborhoods as well the next round because uh, we do serve students from all over the city. So we want to say hi to them too. Yeah, for sure. I was just going to say, like, if, if you hit every neighborhood in the city, it would, that would be a long day. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but, and the holidays will be here in a blink. It's almost November already. Um, so that's amazing. So you mentioned, and this just kind of popped into my head, you mentioned like your students come from uh, all over town really but like where where is the drag program like based out of is there like a home base yes yeah uh, on the map there you can see it's you know we kind of emphasized it a little bit but we're we're here in town we're off of rice um i guess the nearest crash would be rice and camino del sol um so we're on that side of the yeah that's why right there where the drag symbol is that'll be the starting line so we are stationed here in oxnard we serve all of the youth of oxnard that's awesome. And is it only during the school year or is it like a year round thing? Right now we, we mirror the school semester, but we have done some uh, summer school sessions in the past. And I think if things turn around and I'm crossing my fingers, we'll be able to do something again for summer of 2021. That's awesome. And how do people get involved? Great question. We take, um, we take advice from our, um, our high school counselors. Um, they do recommendations to our students, uh, tell them about our program. So we have a close relationship with the Oxnard Union High School District. Um, and then also people just sign up uh, on our website. We have a space there for student signups. People just send an email over if they're interested in looking into a challenge and learning some new opportunities. And then we get in contact with them before the school semester. What kind of costs are involved? That's the best answer I could give you is that it is completely free for the students. What? We're a nonprofit organization. Yes. And we provide everything for the students at no cost. That's amazing. Uh, now I have, because uh, like before I joined this department, I had never heard of drag, but I have since like seen so much of it on Instagram, on YouTube. Um, it's like, so did it start here? with uh, Sergeant Shrub, did you start it or was it something that was already happening in other cities and, and you started the local chapter? No, it was, it was a creation here. Oxnard Police Department, uh, you know, again, back in 2010, Sergeant Charles Woodruff and I uh, put this together and it's been um, just a, a huge success um, because of, you know, our, our, our students, the school district that supports us, Oxnard Union High School District is just a big component. Um, we have support from our own Chief uh, Scott Whitney here to uh, carry and exercise uh, all of our, just our mission for, for giving youth opportunity. And um, for the past decade, we've just, we've serviced well over 600 kids now. Um, many of them are into job placement. Uh, they're continuing education efforts to either junior colleges or, you know, tech schools. Um, we just have so many supporters locally here that, that care about our youth too. So combined, we just collectively, I guess, come together uh, under the drag umbrella and just make it all happen for our kids. That's amazing. And what cities, I mean, you probably know this better than me, what cities is it in now? Um, we do have uh, another chapter in Santa Barbara, the, the, which is affiliated with the Santa Barbara Police Department. Uh, they're working out of uh, San Marcos High School. Um, and they're, they're actually in January. They, they didn't get kind of the green light or the, I don't want to say the green light, but the approval to carry on a, a small distancing class like we were um, here in Ventura County. Um, but they're looking at a January uh, restart um, at that San Marcos High School uh, location. So we're, re we're really happy and excited for them. And then another uh, chapter that we do have is out in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, where they also have a couple of high schools that are involved running the same, same type of curriculum and program. That is awesome. Uh, 
is there anything else before we we hit the uh, the time here is there anything else about the drag program that you want you guys would want to share that we perhaps missed or any last thoughts on it yeah i mean i mentioned that we are a nonprofit organization meaning we don't get any uh funding we're in completely independent so we get funding primarily from volunteers and people from the community sponsorships so if anyone is interested in supporting this program, we are based here in Oxnard and we serve directly here in Oxnard. Um, you can contact us at info at dragteam.org and one of us will respond. Awesome. And about this weekend, one more time, what are the times it starts at? We have 8.30 to 10 is the car show portion, which you can tune in on live stream. And then the cruise is from 10 to 12 um all throughout town so keep an eye out there and vote for your favorite vehicles and give me those sites and those socials where all this fun stuff can be had virtually again awesome we are drag team everywhere that is our handle and our website is dragteam.org awesome and so if we want to go on and vote it that's it's just right there drag team oh if you wanted to vote you send an email to info at dragteam.org now we'll be collecting it and monitoring it throughout the entire day. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys, Daniel and Sergeant Shrub, for, for joining <laughs> us to talk about this this week. And that is Sunday, the 25th of October, the Drag Car Show Cruise for kids and, you know, kids of all ages, of course. Uh, they're starting with the, the live car show streamed online. And then they'll be cruising through neighborhoods uh, in the morning from 10 to noon. Yeah, and if you can if you can put that back up there really quick, Paul, and we'll acknowledge of some of those supporters and absolutely and sponsors for for the cruise. Couldn't do it without them. Um, obviously, I mentioned the Murphy Auto Museum, uh, CBC, which is our credit bureau connection, Chingon Bakery. Uh, Starbucks, um, those folks are bringing uh, the breakfast along with Kiki's uh, restaurant here in town. They're off Gonzales and Lombard there. Um, Breaker Stereo, uh, right here on Oxford Boulevard. They're, they're a great supporter. One of our board members uh, that's just uh, just done a ton of stuff for our program. And, um, you know, we, we, we can't do a lot of this stuff that we do for our youth um, without community support. So check us out at the info there. Um, learn about it. And if you want to be a supporter, um, be maybe a guest speaker, if that's what you want to do and, and come in as a business and talk to our kids. Uh, they're, they're, believe me, they're interested and they are, they're waiting for opportunities. So we appreciate that. Awesome. Well, that is just fantastic stuff that, that you guys are doing. Just great work in, in so many different aspects. And thank you for sh sharing some time with us this evening to spread the word about it, educate a, a lot of us who might not have known any of that information. Uh, and just, um, we're so excited for the event on Sunday and thank you again for your time. Thanks for coming on. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you on the next live straight to you question.